Hello my dear students, welcome to Baidu's exam prep. In this video, we'll be discussing about the graphical approach in linear programming problem. So, uh, what is this linear programming and what are the different types of linear programming and we'll be discussing one problem by using the graphical approach. So, let's see what is the meaning of this word linear programming problem. Now, if I talk about linear programming, it's a quite simple thing. Let us suppose we are having some limited resources and I need to get the best of that limited resources. So definitely in that case, you'll be getting many solutions possible, right? We can have X1, X2, X3, different possible solutions might be possible. So in that kind of scenarios, we always try to uh, take the help of this linear programming problem. So it is the one of the most simplest way to identify or to obtain an optimized solution right so it is you can simply say linear programming is a simple way of optimizing a problem right and definitely we can use this in the real life uh, practical examples right let us suppose uh, we can use in transportation problem uh, we can use in uh, diet problem we can take this example of uh, we can say assignment problem right or we can take an example of a manufacturing problem right so we are having various uh, sectors where we can apply this linear programming problem right or we can in short we can call it as LPP and the main objective is to optimize the result that means in order to get either the maximum profit or the minimum loss because that is the main objective of any uh, uh, problem right so we can solve a variety of problem by using this linear programming and normally it is being used to obtain the it, uh, either the maximization of the profit or the minimization of the cost or the minimization of the use of the resources that means ultimately the goal is we are proceeding for getting the simplified or the optimized use of the resources right so uh, let us take one example so that we can have more clarity now let us suppose i'm taking an example of a diet problem now in a diet problem we can have may various nutrients right so definitely uh, uh, some nutrients are required in subspecified quantity only so we can have many possibilities so in diet problems we can use this concept of linear programming in order to obtain the best optimized results or let us say let's take an example of a transportation problem so transportation problem is simply if i say uh, let us suppose we're having three factories factory one factory two and factory three that you're seeing on the screen right so from factory one to warehouse one from factory one to warehouse two simply we can have different cost values let us suppose we are having a cost value of uh, let us say c1 from uh, factory 1 to warehouse 1, C2, fa factory 1 to warehouse 2, uh, uh, factory 2 to warehouse 1 will be C3, this will be C4, C5 and C6. These are nothing but the transportation cost of unit, unit transportation cost from one factory to the different warehouse so we can have different possibilities so in this kind of scenarios what we do we try to apply the linear programming problem or linear programming approach in order to get the best result like in this case uh, let us suppose i'm talking about the transportation cost so i want to have this cost to be as minimum as possible so in this case I'll be going for the minimization problem or the minimum cost will be calculated by using this LPP. Similarly, we can take the example of uh, your manufacturing problem. In this case, what happens? We are having a um, limited supply of manpower. We are having limited supply of resources or raw materials. So we need to optimize that. So definitely here also, whenever we are dealing with limited resources and many solutions possible. So in that case, what we do, we try to apply the linear programming problem, right? Same goes with the diet problem. Just already we have discussed in this, what we do, we are having various kind of uh, vitamins or various kinds of nutrients is available. So which combination nutrient will be best for that person? That calculation we can do by using this linear programming, right? So let us take one example. Uh, 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 and by using this example, we'll be identifying what is the basic uh, graphical approach. Okay, so let us suppose there is one kind of cake that requires 200 grams of flour and 25 kg of fat, and another cake requires 100 gram of flour and 50 kg of fat. So what we have to do is we have to calculate what is the maximum number of cakes that can be made from 5 kg of flour and 1 kg of fat, right? So definitely, and there is no shortage of ingredients. That is, there is no uh, 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 we can say uh, uh, any ingredient that could be fat or flour which is being short. So here we need to calculate the maximum number of case cake that we can manufacture or that we can make by taking 5 kg of flour and 1 kg of fat. Okay. So whenever we are dealing this kind of situation, definitely we need to uh, take the help of the 
LPP. Now, for solving any linear programming problem, we are having graphical approach also and simplex approach. But the main, uh, we can say the drawback of graphical approach is because we are always dealing with a 2D uh, plane. So we are only, uh, we can only use a graphical approach when we are having only two variables, right? If you're having more than two variables, then we are bound to use the simplex method. Okay, so here if you see, there are two variables only, one is floor and second is your fat. So definitely here, we can simply say, uh, 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 your uh, number of variables are only two, right? So if I try to frame out uh, the tabular format, I can simply say, let us suppose there is X kind of first or egg, a cake of first kind, I'm assuming it has to be X. And for the second kind, I'm taking it to be Y. And for first kind of X, we are using how much? 200 gram of flour and 25 gram of fat. And if I talk about a second kind of cake, we are using 100 gram of flour and 50 gram of fat. And total, what is the availability? 5 kg flour is, is, is the maximum limit that we can use. So that means 5000 gram is the maximum availability or uh, the fat we are having 1 kg flat fat that is we can say 1000 gram of fat is the maximum availability. So now by looking at this table, this nothing new what we have did, just only the uh, uh, statement is converted into a table format. Okay, so let us try to frame out the constraints, the objective function, right? And by solving that, we'll be able to get the best result. Okay, so for framing any linear programming problem, we always try to uh, 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 frame one objective function, which we need to either maximize or minimize, right? Second is your uh, uh, constraints. Like here, if you see, if I'm taking, if I'm manufacturing X quantity of first cake, and y quantity of the second cake, I can simply say 200x plus 100y should be less than equal to 5000. How we can write it, write it like this? Because let us suppose if I manufacture one uh, uh, quantity of first kind, so it will, I'll be only requiring 200 gram of flow. So if I manufacture x gram, so definitely I'll be having 200 into x. And if I say, if I manufacture one uh, cake of the second kind, so definitely uh, we will be only requiring 100 gram of flour. But here we are manufacturing Y amount. So definitely we'll be taking consumption of 100 Y. And the total limitation is, it should be less than 5 kg or 5000 gram, right? So let us try to frame out this equation. And if I try to frame out the first constraint that we'll be getting is 200 X plus 100y less than equal to 5000. If I try to simplify it, the first constraint that we are getting is this one. This is the first constraint. And if I talk about the second constraint, 25x plus uh, 50y, right? Uh, definitely we are talking about this fact, 25x plus 50y less than equal to 1000. So I can simply say 25x plus 50y less than equal to 1000. So here I'm getting the second constraint. Okay, so two constraints I have framed by reading out the statement. So once we have framed these two constraints, now we need to plot this in the XY plane. Okay, or we need to plot in the XY graph. So let us suppose I have plotted this graph. So when I plot this graph, I'm getting some feasible range because what happened if I say the first constraint that we'll be getting, I can write the first constraint as uh, X by 25 plus Y by 50 less than equal to one. This will be the first constraint. Right. So if I try to plot, this is an X and Y intercept. So if I try to plot, I'll be getting this line as constraint number one. Right. And if I talk about the second constraint, I can write the second constraint as X by 40 plus Y by 20 less than equal to one. Okay. So if I try to plot, I'll be getting this as the second constraint. But as these are uh, having the inequality sign, that means all the values which is less than equal to this region. So I will be taking all the values which is towards the origin and this shaded green shaded region, we call it as the feasible region. This green shaded region is called as a feasible region, right? So now what we have uh, understood that by only reading out the statement, we have framed out the constraint and after framing out the constraint, we have just plotted the range where both the constraint is satisfying that criteria. And what we do, 
The next is we try to find out the corner points. So here, if I say there are four corner points, the first is your origin. The second is your 0, 20. Now for calculating this, what you only need to do is you need to calculate equation one and two. You'll be getting a, a coordinates of 20, 10. And the fourth one is uh, 25, 0. So we have identified uh, four corner points. Definitely we are talking about maximization problems. So origin would be taking, but yes, we'll be taking other three corner points that is 0, 20, 20, 10 and 25, 0. So we have identified these are the corner points. Now what we have to do, we need to see what will be the objective function. Now definitely the, he is asking about what is the number of cakes that we are manufacturing. So we can say if I'm manufacturing X of first kind, the y of second kind, I can simply say x plus y is the total number of cakes and that we need to maximize. So the objective function over here will be x plus y is equal to z max. Okay, this will be called as objective function. So what we do, we try to place the each and every coordinate in the objective function and where we'll be getting this value to be maximum that will be called as the opt optimized value. So let's see uh, where we are getting this because this is the objective function that we have framed out, right? And we are having some corner points uh, that you can see on the screen. So what we do, we try to uh, uh, place individual points. So this is your first point that is 0, 20. So if you place this over here, we'll be getting uh, 0 plus 20, that is 20, right? The second is 20 plus 10, we'll be getting this as 30. And 25 plus 0, that'll be 25. So definitely I'll be getting this as the maximum or the optimal value okay that means if i want to get the maximum if i want to manufacture if i want to make maximum number of cakes i can make total of 30 number of cakes out of which 20 cakes will be of the first kind and the uh, 10 number of cakes will be of the second kind right so from here now we are able to calculate the uh, total number of cakes or maximum number of cakes that we can manufacture by having the restriction. The restriction was what was the restriction? Restriction was you can only have five kgs of flour and one kg of fat. Okay, that was the restriction that we were having. That means the resources were only limited. From the limited resources, we are trying to get the best of that. And after we are applying this graphical approach, we have calculated that best result and we have calculated the maximum number of clicks that we can manufacture is 30, right? So this is all about the graphical approach. I hope you will enjoy it. Please try some problems. And if you feel any doubt, please write in the comment section. So thank you guys for joining with me. This is Suraj Gopi signing off. Stay corrected for more such content to our very loved Baiju's exam prep. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. Take care. Stay safe.